Minute clock. All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the August 8th meeting of the Code Enforcement Board. The meeting will now come to order. May we have a roll call, Madam Secretary? Ms. McLean? Here. Ms. Himes? Here. Ms. Roby? Mr. Harrington? Here. Ms. Kundig? Here. All right, uh, may we have a motion to excuse Ms. Roby? So moved. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign approved. Um, you know, there, there's a, an issue right now because we only have, we're supposed to have seven members, and so the quorum is four. So there are four of us here right now. I'd, I'd like to address okay, that. Uh, for those of you in our vast uh, viewing audience, uh, if you're watching this because you're interested in code enforcement, we have two open positions open and would, would really like to have some of you apply sure. uh, for it. These appointments are made by your commissioner in your particular zone, but uh, they make their appointments usually from the applications they receive. and. Uh, it's getting difficult uh, if one of us has to leave the room. We have to, we have to uh, stop the meeting and start it again. So, if there's anyone out there, please uh, go online, look up the uh, the uh, application, fill it out. You can do it all online, and we would love to have you join us. Uh, and uh, if there are any commissioners uh, watching, uh, please help us out. Thank you. Anyway, I've been told that perhaps we have some filled now. We may be yes. voting on them in August. The commission will vote on the two new members we do August 21st. People? I believe we do. Well, and then we'll go that, and renew That's Mr. a big McLean. relief because yeah. we need them badly. Right. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so, has everybody had a chance to read the minutes? Yes. Uh, any corrections or additions? Okay, motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion, Ms. Heim. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Does anyone need to disclose any ex parte communications? Uh, do we have any announcements, Madam Secretary? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Case number six, CEB 07-19-154 is in compliance 719. Okay. Um, case number seven, CEB 07-19-126 at 279 Boylston Avenue is in compliance 8-2-2019. Case number 12. CEB 07-19-139 at 1608 North Oleander is in compliance 8-7-2019. That's it. Good. Thank you. All right. Would the cold officers please come forward and be sworn in? <clears throat> Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. All right, everyone, here's our procedure. We'll be calling cases by number, and for the most part, in orders they are listed on the agenda. If there are attorneys that must be present in court, we'll hear those cases first. If there are police officers that are testifying that need to get back on duty, uh, we will hear those cases first. When your case is called, please come forward and be sworn in. State your name and address for the record. <coughs> if you are not the owner of the property, please state your relationship to the owner. Our proceedings are recorded, so please speak into the mic. The board will hear from the code officers first, and then you'll be given a chance to respond. Please direct all your responses to the board. Um, if we go past 11 o'clock, and I doubt that we will today, um, if you're still here waiting for your case to be heard, if you'll come, we'll take a little break and you can come forward and tell us what number your case is and we'll take that case or those cases in order. 
but I, I, I think we're going to try and get through this by 11 o'clock today. Okay, so we have no lean reviews today. We'll start um, with case number one, CEV 0619-125, Imogene and Fred Gilmore Sr. Respondent present. State your name, please. Good morning. Jim Pickens on behalf of the estate of Mr. Fred Gilmore. Oh, you don't need to be sworn in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good morning, Mr. Jackson. What can you tell us? Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Anthony Jackson, attorney for the city of Daytona Beach. Um, the inspector in this case is Cliff Reconzone. This is before you've been position of a fine. Mr. Reconzone indicates that the, um, they have their permit, they're doing the work, they're just waiting for it to final. In fact, they may even be done with the work, but they're just waiting to get the uh, final on it. So now we're going to ask uh, for an amendment to the next cutoff so they can get everything taken care of. Weren't the permits issued last time? Am I? And I'll have to look to uh, Mr. Okay. Reconzone for that. Morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, the permits were already issued. Uh, the work has already been completed. They're just getting the, um, the secondary shed needs to be added to the demo permit. Okay. And that permit needs to be finaled. And the, the roof work has already been completed, and that permit just needs to be finaled. So we're just waiting for permits to be finaled and the second shed to be com completely removed. Okay. Thank you. And would you like to add anything? Uh, the, the state and the family just appreciate the consideration and the patience of the city while they okay. work through this. So you expect that they'll be finished with this work by next month and everything done? And that completed? is anticipated. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Any comments from the board? Chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until... 9-4-2019 to come into compliance to be returned okay. to a subsequent meeting for consideration of fine up to $1,000 per day until compliance is achieved. Is there such a motion? I'll move. Second. Okay. Uh, motion, Ms. McLean. Second, Mrs. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Case number two, CEB 04-19-71, Yvonne Bell. Respondent present. Okay. Oh, this is actually a bi-monthly uh, progress report, right? Yes. Uh, okay. And, and Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, the, the situation with this is this is one where uh, Ms. Bell is getting assistance through one of the city programs. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a low issue with uh, a contractor that they had tried to bring on board, which delayed it a little bit. Uh, the city's asking for uh, if we can uh, amend the, um, I don't know if we have a uh, compliance date, but if we do, we need no, another two I months. No, I don't, don't think, continue for <coughs> bi-monthly progress dates. Uh, so we can just continue, or what? what is the? Well, yeah, if we can just continue. Our anticipation is that we prob they probably will be able to have this done in another couple of months, but it, it is working through the program, so if we can just have another. Can you explain what program it is and what the issue is? Okay, I'd have to look through our respect to Mr. Rickens. Okay. It, it's one of the city's re rehabilitation programs. Uh-huh. And... The city is finding the contractor and actually doing the work on the roof. And is, I believe, the way it's processed is there's a, um, they, they do a, um, they do the loan through the city and they, they have, it either gets paid back by, to the city or um, it's paid through the city. The contractor that the city had fell through, okay. and they have to rebid. So it's going to take another two months before the process of the bidding process and getting it by the time it'll be by the next update. It should be completed. 
Okay, so could we just ask for another, uh, just another progress report yeah. in two months? Or do we want to do a compliance state? What is it? It should be finished by the two months. Okay. The way it was explained to me, it should be completed by the two months. Is there a tarp on the roof? What, what yeah, there's a little. Yeah, a small tarp on the roof. That I so, do we just continue the case until... Yes. The, that's, uh, what, that's what we're requesting. Okay. So, um, right. the chair will entertain a motion to continue this case until, now wait a minute, what's the next, what's that date? 10-2. 10-2. Uh, would be the next October. Progress. Would be the next cutoff date. The next meeting is 10-10. 10-10. All right. Till the next cutoff date of 10-2. Yes. Okay. Is there such a motion? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion, Ms. Plain, yep. a second, Ms. Carrington. All in favor, say well, aye. Madam Chair, if I can just Okay, input. wait a minute. Hold yeah. on. We're going to... I think what you were saying that. was progress report at the end of the yeah, cutoff date. If a progress report, we'll need it at the meeting. Right, the meeting date. 10-10. 10, 10. Yeah. 10, 10 Continue the case until... All right, we're yeah, going to... Yeah, that would be the meeting date, motion. right? That'd be the meeting date. But do we have a compliance date? No, no, we don't, we don't have okay. this this is just an understanding. I guess if you can include then if we, you know. Okay, so here's what we'll, con just continue. we'll continue the case until have a bot. No, that won't. We can't have a, a, um, a progress report and a compliance date. We well, can first of all, I need to withdraw my second and right, withdraw that's, the. That's right. So we're going to need to make a new motion. So. Yeah. Um, would so I withdraw. Okay, and so the motion is withdrawn. withdrawn. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Could, okay. All right. Okay. So, do we make a compliance date? Is that Let's do a compliance date November, and that would be solve the problem? That would solve the problem. That would yeah. solve yeah. the problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm looking for my. You're saying compliance in November, but attending in the meeting in October. City's handling it. Yeah, they have it, so it's just like, I think we'll do a, I think that makes <coughs> okay, the most sense if the city's handling the case, right? Yeah. This is too confusing. All right. Can't close it. All right. That makes progress. That, that should be plenty of time for anything to get done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Agreed. Compliance mm -hmm. by... All right, the chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 11 6, 2019, to come into compliance to be returned to um, a meeting for consideration of a fine of up to. No, well, we don't even. Um, yeah. yeah. $1,000 per day mm -hmm. until compliance is achieved. Is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Motion, Ms. Heim, uh, second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> okay, good. Next case CEB 0619 121, Willie May and Rufus McCoy. And they were here. I think the sun was, I think they were here. Yeah. Okay. Come on, take your time. We want to take the, wait, maybe we can take the mic, can we take the mic to her? She wants to come up, okay, whatever she wants. Oh, I see. Yeah, we could. You can sit down and I'll give you a mic. Well, three of them already. Anyway. Do you? Make sure it's on. Thank you. Fine. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Have a red light, have a green light. That's, no, it's, it's, it was, it's green. Get it warm. Is that mic working? Is this mic working? Yeah. Is that working? Yes. It's yeah. Good. good morning. Good morning. State your name, please. My name is Mrs. Willie May Hornsby McCoy. Okay. Could we have that mic one minute? Raise your right hand. I confirm. Do you confirm? I confirm. <laughs> you swear I confirm? I don't swear. That the I testimony confirm. you're about to give is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. That's right. Give the truth. 
Good morning. We'll hear from, let, let us hear from Mr. Jackson first, and then I'll give you a chance to talk. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is John Stinson. Mr. Stinson reports that the uh, respondent is making progress, um, although his communication this morning with um, um, Ms. May. McCoy. Uh, McCoy, Ms. McCoy. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, there may be other additional issues that he wasn't aware of, but as far as he uh, knows that they're making progress and uh, he expects that they should be able to comply by next cutoff. But I will tend to Mr. Stinson okay. to speak to that further. Right. Good morning, Mr. Stinson. Good morning. <clears throat> uh, John Stinson, code inspector with the city. My qualifications are on file. <clears throat> um, this case started as part of the code walk monthly code walks that we have. There were quite a few issues there, <clears throat> outside storage, junk vehicle, parking, and roof damage. Um, there has been some progress. Permits have been pulled for the roof. Um, things have kind of slowed down. Um, Ms. McCoy has advised me that she's had some issues with her son who's been here <clears throat> the last uh, hearing, and I will let Ms. McCoy inform you of what's going on okay. with the son. Okay, what would you like to tell us, Ms. McCoy? Yeah. I've, I've lived at 332 Dealey Street ever since 1967, July the 4th. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love my home. I love my neighborhood. It's very safe. And I did everything I could do. But I was away for graduation <clears throat> of two kids that I might not get the chance to ever see again, but they paid for me to come way before this hearing. I knew, uh, I didn't know about it. My son contrived everything. He was rude to the people that came out. My son. I know, Rufus we were here. McCoy. Yeah, we were but here. But Rufus Sr. has dimensions. We know. And I love my husband enough to stay with him through the dimensions. Okay, but I'm trying. My income is $445. My secondary job income is 200 My lawyer is supposed to be taking care of me. He's not taking care of me. So I'm destitute for money. I'm trying. I so, take my home off. There's no money. Okay. I've had insurance and they said <coughs> they pay Wells Fargo. So I'm doing the best that I can do. Okay, so let just let me know what now you pulled it, the permit for I never pulled the permit. Well, who did? That's not my signature and I'm not gonna sit here to no. pay. Okay. All right, all right, let I'm gonna ask Mr. Stenson to step in here and tell us what happened. Um, the permit was pulled. Um, Ms. McCoy... It was her son pulled the permit? That's correct. Okay. She says that uh, the son pulled the permit in her name. Okay. She's basically contesting everything he's done with the property at this point. <clears throat> um, so that's going to be a separate issue away Between from the city. Them. Between them, correct. Yes. Um, I have no problem giving them more time to okay. do whatever they have to do, mm. but still accomplish what needs to get done. Okay. So l let me ask you what you're proposing to do at this point so we can decide what we want to do. Okay, I went to two organizations, the one behind City Hall, they couldn't help me mm -hmm. because they was in on it with FEMA. Okay. And FEMA gave $300. $300 didn't even touch that roof. And I don't know where else to go but Mr. John, John, Mr. John? <laughs> Ms. Mr. John, Mr. Stent, this morning, yes. that there is some organization that he could prefer me to okay. to get some help. Okay. Because I I need to stay in my home. Yes, I you have do. Permanent cancer. I need to stay I know. in my home. I know. We get it. All right. I so, appreciate y'all. Okay. So we're just going to have a progress report. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh. Does the board have any questions? I think a progress reports. Okay. About all we can do. Okay. 
All right, the chair will entertain a motion uh, to start a progress report beginning in two months, with that, which would be on the date of 10 10. So moved. Second. All right, motion Mrs. Heim, second Ms. McLean. All in favor say aye. 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 Like yes. sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay, so you come back here in two months and tell us where everything is All in right. the in the okay. story. You need months. to get. Yeah, I hope you get thing. your roof fixed. You need to leave one thing. Go ahead. And then. There is an order with the city of Daytona Beach with my water. My grandson is named Callie Shane Williams. He will be the person if I die. Come in and see y'all. Okay. He's in the military. He's been up for 14 years serving your country. What's his last name? Williams. Okay. Natalie Hudson is secondary. That's his sister. Okay. I'm giving it to you because Rufus ain't going to do nothing for me. He's okay. not hurt me and he ain't going to do nothing. Okay. We understand. Okay. Thank yes, you. Good luck. Hard. Good luck to you. Thank you, Thank you. you. Were you, did you get both of those names, <laughs> uh, Mr. Sampson and June? I've got uh, no, Mr. Williams okay. and Ms. Hudson. Okay. All right, good. We got it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, we'll move on to case number four, CEB. Thank you. CEB 0719-128, Norman Riley at 746 South Palmetto. Okay. I know that he's not here. He's deceased. Um, I'd like to know what, what's going on there. Mr. Jackson, can you tell us? No one's here? Okay. Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Um, in the past, Mr. Riley's daughter has been here regarding, I think, his property. I know regarding her property. Uh, Mr. Riley is someone who's come before the board in the past numerous times. Uh, daughter. No. Well, he had yeah. years, years okay. past, for, for years past. Oh, okay. Uh, but, yes, Mr. Riley's now deceased. Mm -hmm. uh, the property was pro properly posted and, and notice was given. There was a... Um, uh, I, I saw a notification to a, a care of, I presume that was from the past, uh, June. Was that, Car that. was that Carter? Yes. But there has been all of the uh, notifi notification requirements. Right, okay. Uh, pursuant to law. Yes, that's from the tax roll. Okay. It is Joyce E. Evans. EUC at Al. Okay. And so uh, the inspector, Jerome McCoy, Mr. McCoy reports he has not heard from anyone, okay. even though those notices have been given. Um, and so uh, he's asking to impose a fine in the amount of uh, $100 per day to a maximum of um, $15,000. Let me ask, so someone is living there. Who, who's living there, Mr. McCoy, do you know? It's just a, is it a relative or just tenant? Tenant. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Ron McCoy, Inspector for the City. My credentials on file. Um, it was a complaint-driven case. It was okay. a tenant in there at okay. the time, but now it's vacant. Oh, it's vacant now. Okay. Hmm. So what? What are the? So here we have failure to obtain business tax receipt and failure to obtain a rental license, and we don't have anyone. Are they advertising? Do you know? As far as online, <clears throat> I don't see any advertisement yeah. there. Um, and I don't haven't spoken to the owner, so I don't know right. what the... Right, okay. We've had no communication. Okay. So they don't need a business t license. Well, still probably if it's listed as a rental property, <laughs> they do need a license. Yeah. Well, all the knowledge we have now is that it's a property that was being rented at the time right. when this it was initiated. Right. So at, at the time it was a rental property. We presume it still is, unless we're told otherwise. And right. uh, without any response, that's what we have. Right now, yeah. as far as you know, there's nobody living there. That's, That's correct. And who, who is the owner? This Joyce Evans? Well, Mr. Riley, by 
uh, by deed. Uh, Ms. Evans by, is on the tax roll. Instead of it, would it be okay, a, but there's that, nobody living there now, would it be a requirement with government non compliance now? There's nobody there anymore, so are they in compliance now? Nobody there? That's what I was asking. I'm not, I don't know if you want to say anything. Well, how about if you do this? Can I, can I add something in here, Tony? <laughs> yeah. So um, this is an instance where the person is just non-compliant with our program. Um, they're obviously, we can tell from the computer, working through, they just redid a roof, they went through permitting, they're communicating with City Hall about that type of stuff. They're not communicating with us about this. So without some kind of declaration saying we are not renting this property, we had no intention to rent this property, our, our stance is that they're still in violation and that their intention is, is they're just trying to conceal their intention. Uh, right. Captain Lee, is there something that you see over there that would uh, confirm who actually is involved in the property? Do we have an owner or is it just the contractor? The contractor is the one that requested the permit and then had the permit finalized just in the end of June. Is that correct, Steve? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So we would maintain our position okay. that it's okay. being rented. All right. Uh, Mrs. Himes motion. made a motion or is making a motion to impose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches the maximum of $15,000. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. Roby. All in favor say aye. Aye. And Ms. Klain? Aye. It's hard to do that. Ma motion carries. Madam Chair, I'll ask. I, I, I'm sorry I didn't interrupt, but if a second motion that, to deal with the um, the uh, business tax receipt for the 250. Okay, we'll uh, make a motion okay. to. Uh, I need a motion to amend that and order a $250 one-time administrative so fee moved. for business tax receipt. Moved by Mrs. Himes. Is there a second to that? Second. Second, Ms. McLean. All in favor, say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. And I case number 5, CEB 0719-153, Brandon Beck. Respondent present? No. Okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Sarah Kirk. Uh, Ms. Kirk reports that... Um, the first contact she ever had from this respondent was the day after our last code meeting. Nothing's been done. Uh, this case has been going on since April. She's asking for uh, a $100 fine to a maximum of $10,000. And I tend to Ms. Kirk if you have any factual questions. Anyone have any questions? What was your contact with her? Uh, what did she uh, or him? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the first time I had contact, oh, Sarah Kirk, inspector with the city. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, I did not have any contact with him until the day after last month's hearing. Okay. And he explained to me that he had to go out of town with a illness and for work. And um, also the retaining wall, he said that he can't fix that because of a plant, a protected species of plant, so he can't do anything with the retaining wall. Um, okay. It was complaint driven. <laughs> it was complaint driven, and uh, I asked him if he would be here, and he said he might, and that was okay. that was yeah. that. All right, Chair, I'll entertain a motion. Is there any other comments from yeah, the board? I have a question. I see up there 418 Hillside, but on here is 422. Are they combining? Oh, that's just the GPS, I guess, from when I take the picture. But are you talking about the? On the top, address. Yeah. right now it's four. It's just a GPS on oh, the iPad the camera, line. but it's 422 Hillside. Okay. So the palmettos there are protected species. <laughs> we aren't bought. I'm not this. sure. I, I'm thinking maybe is that a century plant? Is that? I, I don't know. I, <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that's the <laughs> of my favorite. <laughs> All right. Chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $100 per day effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of $10,000. Such a motion? So moved. Second. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, motion, Ms. McLean. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number six is in compliance, 719. Case number seven is in compliance, 82. Case number eight, CEB 07 19 130. Jackie Morris. Who showed was here last time, too. Yes. Okay. State your name and address. Uh, Jackie Mari Spencer, 648 North Street, Daytona Beach, 32114. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I affirm. Okay. Um, hold on a second. What can you tell us? Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones reports that the uh, respondent uh, had a rental inspection done on July um, 18th and uh, has a few things that need to take care of. Uh, Mr. Jones believes he can take care of those by the next cutoff, and so we're asking to amend to the next cutoff for compliance. I turn to Mr. Jones if you have any factual questions. Oh, Mr. Jones, good morning. I have a question. Good morning, Mark Jones, uh -huh. Inspector of the City of Daytona. These are original pictures from February, or is that no, these pictures are No, these pictures are from July 18th. These pictures we're looking at right now are July 18th? Yes. Do you think that's substantial progress? No, that was when we had the first inspection of the property. Okay, that was two weeks ago? Correct. Okay. Give or take. All right, uh, Mr. Spencer, property's looking pretty rough. What's going on there? Yeah, the, um, well, I have one, uh, it is a duplex. So there's one tenant that is moving out who's going to allow me to do it. After reviewing the property with Mr. Jones, uh, I haven't been in there as active as a landlord. Um, the property acquired from my parents, so I really haven't been involved. But after going in there with Mr. Woods, I see that both sides actually need to be totally renovated, in my opinion. So that's what I'm looking to do. Um, the property on this side, that they are moving out which is going to provide me an opportunity to have the whole place empty to, empty. Do, to do renovations, which is that stove that you were looking at. Um, I was just kind of taken back when we went in and saw the condition of it. Um, so you didn't, you scheduled an inspection, but you didn't realize that was going on? No, it was... It, you haven't been in the... So you inherited this property? Yeah. When yeah. did you inherit the property? I might have, I, I think I've had it at least, might be might be second year. It's It's been um, uh, low-income families and behind on rent kind of thing. I just haven't been as aggressive as a landlord as I should be. A lesson learned uh, because all these repairs pretty much would yeah, come out of pocket. It doesn't matter whether they're yeah. low-income or not. Yeah, you know. but they were, um, so I, I do know that both sides need to be totally renovated. The other, um, the other well, side. Let, let me ask what you've done so far since the inspection in two weeks. I've just been acquiring information for handy, handyman and electricians and plumbers. He pointed out some plumbing issues on one side that needs to be, needs to be fixed as well as some uh, outlets that I need to put in the, in the bathroom and bars off the windows and stuff like that. Mr. Jones, does he need uh, permits for this work? Uh, some of it may require a permit. Uh, that would he would need to check with the building department uh, because there was some areas okay. where the ceiling has been uh, had fallen in, uh, and the drywall had fallen down, and there were some electrical issues. Yeah, um, hey, but that you would were, be the building department. Okay, thank you. You were first notified in February. Well, they, that was the the whole communication thing. There was it was a notification of come and purchase a license, which, oh, I, which I did shortly after. about the license versus the yeah. so I rental came, inspection. Yeah, uh -huh. so I wasn't aware of that inspection mm -hmm. part. So I came and purchased a license, and then it was like I needed to pay more because it was a duplex. Yeah. I came back and paid more, and then and then later I got a notice of I need to come to court. So I didn't, didn't know about this part of it. 
When is when are the other tenants moving out? There, as we speak, there are some of the stuff is out. Okay. Uh, again, Department on the left. Some of the stuff is out, and real soon, I'm going by uh, his job when I leave here to actually get a get a key to go in and see where where we are. Do you think you can be under contract with your people by next cutoff? Not what, finished, what, but uh, yeah, when when is uh, I was uh, thirty days. Well, the, the cutoff date is actually the 4th of September. Next, next Will you meeting. have s substantial work done then is what he's oh, asking. There'll be, yeah, there'll I'm be stuff, asking if I don't you'll know be under be. contract for that work. Right. Yeah. Um, what, what do you mean by contract? You're... Will you have a plumber if you need one, an electrician if oh, you yeah. need one? Yeah, I'm going to going to acquire that shortly. Uh, work completed and within 30 days. I'm not 100% sure because I want to kind of redo both sides. Yeah, um, I can understand. But yeah, you you can get contracts within. within yeah, th people th contract to work within that time. Sure. Yeah. Mr. Jones. Yeah, the, the concern that I have or that we have is one tenant is moving out, the other tenant is still there, and there are some life safety issues in the sense of uh, bars on windows mm -hmm. and bedrooms, so there's not a <coughs> secondary uh, escape, there's some electrical issues, some uh, the ceiling issues, so we're, uh, you know, a little concerned that it needs to progress rather quickly or... If it's I'm going a for a full concerned. remodel to... I, I'm a little concerned, too. Does he have a list of those things that you've required? Yes, I provided him a list. It's uh, mm -hmm. quite extensive for both properties. Any way we can... And this is that into one the record? Duplex. It's uh, two addresses, but the property address is the 533. Uh, yeah, the, um, the ceiling is going to be fixed uh, sooner. Is That's one thing you pointed out. Any way we can enter those violations into the record they so are. we know what we're dealing with here? I think they I think they are just because they exist as documents for the rental license itself. Right. If we enter uh, them as a separate independent right. case, that would be just that, a separate case. Yeah. Uh, we have a, the rental license that has that checklist and those so you requirements have, are you have that accounted document. for. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. what the concern we had was just wanting to make sure we didn't convert this into a renovation project without recognizing the urgency of the Okay, I, um, I heard what Mr. Compliance. Jones said, that there are life safety issues. So I heard that loud yeah. and clear, and I see what I see. Yeah, and when we do our inspection report, it uh, breaks down all the different violations, and that is then scanned into the, uh, to our track it system, so it is a public record, and it shows uh, all the items that need to be uh, addressed. Yeah. And you, uh, have, you have that information. He no. sent me a, a list, yeah. a, yeah. a list of things that need to be fixed. Um, so uh, what I'm asking you is what progress you're going to think you have accomplished by the next time we meet. Well, I know the, the, the ceiling that he's talking about, where the residents do live, that part would be fixed. The, um, as far as acquiring the electrician and plumber, that part would be done too, and, and uh, things that he can tell me that needs to be done immediately is those, um, like he mentioned some, I don't want anybody to get hurt, but he mentioned some, some life-threatening um, things that we want to address right away. Um, I'll find out from him exactly what that is. Well, he could probably tell us right now what that is, yeah. what the life safety issues are, mm -hmm. right, Mr. Jones? Uh, yes, the concerns were the uh, bars on the bedroom windows. We had no uh, smoke detectors in any of the bedrooms or any in the house at all. Uh, we had a lot of um, the GFIs in the bathroom, which are supposed to be there for, again, a safety uh, measure. Uh, none of that. And it, none of those items were there at the unit. Uh, and I'm a little concerned when you have a unit that you're able, when the drywall is missing from the ceiling and you're looking up to the underside of the roof, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of, uh, from the photos, a lot mm -hmm. of other damage with windows and door frames and right. so forth. Yeah. So. Mr. Jones, won't the smoke detectors have to be wired? I just want him to know rather than... No, they, uh, what they allow is what's called a 10-year life smoke detector. Oh, okay. It comes with a 10-year battery, right. and those are uh, considered acceptable. Yeah. 
It looks like the ones in there were not operable. Look like they were old, very old. Um, the ceiling, from what the tenant was telling me, is the porch had a leak, which wet the drywall inside, and, and he actually is going to repair that himself. Okay. He has we, No. Can we... Um, Go ahead. Um, address this so that all of the safety issues have to be done within a month? Yeah. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. just, and then get a progress report after that on the rest of it, but by this, by the cutoff next time, every one of those safety issues has to be yeah. taken care of. Mm-hmm. Is that a motion or? Yeah, can I make a, is, are we ready for that yet, a motion? The, the only thing that I'm, well, I'm very concerned about the life safety issues. But I'm also, one of my concerns is that, Mr. Spencer, you were notified in February of this. And no, no, February of acquiring a business license, acquiring a, a license to, to, pay, to pay for a well, rental license. So when did they do the inspection denying yeah. you the license? Yeah, and I, I learned um, from speaking with Mr. Jones prior to the uh, the hearing that I don't have a license until I pass inspection. Correct. So that wasn't really known until well, maybe it's July. Well, it's really not yeah. up to, the, I mean, the law is the law. Um, yeah, but am I hearing this right, that in February he was notified of the license? Mm -hmm. When you came down and got the license, mm -hmm. it turned out you didn't pay enough. Right, but right. But you had not been in right. to see. Okay. And then I got another notification that I needed to pay more, and I came down within days and paid that. Mr. And, Spencer, where do you live? Uh, 648 North Street. Okay. So you're cl pretty close by to this property. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And didn't know it was, I mean... I'm very concerned yeah, about I, I, this yeah. property. Mm -hmm. And I, I understand that uh, after landlord. going in there with Mr. Jones and seeing the condition of it, that, um, like I say, I was taken back, okay. that, that well, it were, hasn't been. There were, we know that there are safety yeah. issues. Okay. We know that, right. that, that need to be yeah. We need to do something by the next meeting. Yeah. We yeah. do. Yeah. We need to be fine. Right. All right. So, um... Ms. McQueen, you made, would you restate your motion? I make a motion that all of the safety issues have to be taken care of by the next, in total, in full, not in progress, but in total, in full, taken care of by the next cutoff, um, or there will just be no mercy. <laughs> given a That's very fresh. I call for no mercy after that. And then, and then a progress report on what else needs to be done. Mm -hmm. to read, the issues first, and then redefine mercy and <laughs> it's going to be a hang okay. I mean, But that it's no. fine. Okay. But that there's no more progress reports. You are issued a fine if that's not taken care of. How, how much of a fine? Motion now. Uh, but I do. Or maybe that's too much for one motion. No, no. not too much for no. one motion. So it just need to be second. We're going, so we have a motion. Does someone want to second, second that second. motion? All right, second. Would you reread the motion, please? Well, okay. <laughs> Let, let's try and restate the motion yeah. so that we can. You can leave the no mercy part off. I'm just telling you. Okay. Um, what I understand the motion to be is that we're going to amend the previous order of Non-compliance, and we're going to require that the life safety issues be taken care of by the next cutoff date, which is nine four. Or you will be turned. You will be fine. You will come back to us, return to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. And then further order, progress report. Okay, let's put the meeting date in there. I did. We put the cutoff date in there. What's meeting he's going to come back to? He's going to come back to the 912 yeah. meeting. Yeah, Madam Chair, what we're actually doing is amending the uh, imposition of a fine. But what you're amending it to do is for this progress report, I mean, for uh, 
have these <coughs> items to come into compliance as you announced right. um, by next call, and then you want to further order that we have a progress report by such and such a date. And we'll have a progress return. report at the 912 meeting. Right. All other issues. For all other issues. That's yes. it. That's it. Right. And establish okay. a compliance, a uh, subsequent compliance date. And we can ask for a subsequent compliance date at this point, which could be 10 to, if that's agreeable, or do we just want a progress report? Progress. Well, it's up, it's up to us. Progress report. The progress report would be fine because if we right. find no progress, it would still be 10 to where we were. That's, that's true. Okay. Okay. So we're, we just want all the life safety issues taken care of by the next cutoff date, and we want a progress report on everything else. For the termination of a compliance date. And yeah. at that point, we'll have a determination of a compliance date as well to get everything else fixed. Okay. So, so that I'm clear, yeah. uh, <laughs> is, uh, is uh, the life the life threatening issues need to be in compliant by the fourth. Right. Correct. And then there's another court date on the twelfth. Correct. Right. Where okay. you will give us, you will tell us, or for you tell, stay in touch with Mr. Jones. Mm -hmm. You will tell Mr. Jones what exactly has been accomplished as far as any of the other issues. And what, and you'll, we'll talk about how long it will take you at that point. We'll decide how long you'll get to get all of these other things. The rest of the list. The, the rest of it done. Oh. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Jones. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait we a minute. Mr. Jones, is he going to need a permit to do any of those life saving things? Uh, he shouldn't need a permit for the life safety issues. Yeah. Uh, the exception could be. If he's got to run a new electrical circuit for the GFCIs, uh -huh. I don't know if that's necessary. Right. Uh, but changing a outlet or taking the bars off the windows or installing the smoke detectors uh, wouldn't require a permit. Right. Okay. But the yeah. GFIs may. May, yeah. Yeah, I think the bars are off now, but we do all the other um, stuff. Yeah. How old is the building? Built in the 50s, my understanding. So an electric permit maybe or maybe not. I don't, we don't know. We'll have yeah. to see. Mm -hmm. But it needs to be done at any rate. All right, we have a motion and a second. And I think everybody's clear on what it is. Who was the second? Ms. McLean made the motion. Um, Ms. Himes second. All in favor say aye. 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 Like, sign, opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Case number 9CB06-19-103. Grace Patterson, trustee. Respondent not present. Okay. This is from first notification is last November. Dang. Yes. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you from position of a fine. The inspectors, Mark Jones, so Mr. Jones reports that um, back in April it received a call uh, that uh, the original notice wasn't received, but the violations will be taken care of immediately, was what he was told by the respondent. Uh, but he failed the rental inspection in June. It was given until July to uh, get things taken care of, nothing's, uh, there's no contact apparently, no contact. Uh, the, the inspector's requesting, the inspector's Mark Jones and he's requesting a $100 day fine to a maximum of $15,000. I would tend to Mr. Jones. Okay, so uh, the issues have not been taken care of, Mr. Jones? I uh, have no idea, I've had no contact okay. from the owner since okay. the last time he was here. All right. Chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $100 per day against respondent effective today, <laughs> continue until compliance is achieved, or reaches a maximum of $15,000. Is there such a motion? So moved. Seconded. Okay. Um, a motion, Mr. Harrington, and second, Mrs. Himes. Or Ms. McLean, either? Doesn't matter. Okay, Ms. Times, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like, sign, and post. Motion carries. Okay. 
Case number 10, CEB 0619-102, Holly Hoffman. We'll get there. At 415 North Halifax, we have two cases, 10 and 11, but two different units, so. Yes, Madam Chair, it's going to be the same circumstance, mm -hmm. but the inspector in this case is uh, Mark Jones, and Mr. Jones reports that um, as in response to uh, a complaint, tenant complaint, he um, determined um, it was determined that it was rental property. Uh, the property was posted in February uh, with a compliance deadline in um, March. Um, he is, they've since gotten an inspection, failed the inspection. That inspection was done on uh, July 25th, and so uh, Mr. Jones is asking that we amend to the <coughs> for them to uh, make those repairs. And I tend to Mr. Jones. This is also from first being notified in February. I mean, I'm having a hard time with these dates when people act like somebody's given them a, from the city until they take notice of what we're trying to do here. So This photo, what is, the, what is going on? Uh, in that photo, what the owner has done is she's enclosed part of the back porch on Unit 114. Mm -hmm. oh, that's our and right by there. doing that, what uh -huh, she right. did was she enclosed the secondary exit out of the master bedroom because there's a window from the bedroom that is boarded up. Uh, that is one of the items on the uh, inspection report that needs to be corrected. In order to correct that, she has to remove that? Yes, because she's got to have, we've got to have access out of the, the bedroom besides just the door going into the bedroom. And they, uh, talking to the tenant, she said that the owner has done it and is using it uh, for storage. The owner, the ten, for storage, the tenant doesn't have a, a key or anything to that space. So it was done probably without a permit. To yeah. Um, yes, that you are 100% correct. It was without a permit. If you if you recall back last year sometime, we had a case, this case already, for yeah, the yes. no permit. And that was at the time which they discovered there was a rental violation, I believe, as well. And that's why you're seeing this case in front of you. Oh, and that, the, so this is left over from last year. Yeah, the, the yeah. no permit case, I believe, ended in a fine. Uh, there was no response, no action taken. I believe it maxed out at uh, the $10,000. So why are we asking uh, for... Um, amend to amend the non-compliance. Why aren't we just finding? Well, Why because we on a on a rental inspection, once we do a rental inspection, we give the party 30 days to make those corrections and to bring it into compliance. And did that, they respond to that at all? Well, a lot of them do. Did, uh, did this, one? this one, I don't know. She. I haven't. I won't know until uh, August 26th whether she has complied or not. Uh, from past experience because this is a case uh, that was before the board before I, I doubt that she will respond but um, Be uh, because so one of the, the other go ahead when was the notice posted uh, the notice uh, was posted on February 21st with a compliance deadline of March yeah. uh, so. I had a very hard time getting a hold of her right. once I finally did get a hold of her she had me uh, schedule with the tenants and then of course that just again took the process yeah. longer. Right. The next inspection is August 26th? Yes, I just finally was able to get into the units on July 25th. Oh, oh. So August 25th, 26th is the date that she has to have everything uh -huh. uh, from the rental license okay. correct. Are we, are we legally required then to give them that time? Yes. Yeah. Are we? Well, are it is my understanding. Yeah. But I would. Well, yeah. So you, the city, gives the respondent a month to comply. Is that right? Yeah. So the goal here is, and it always is, is compliance. So we do try to provide what time frame we think is adequate um, okay. in 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 these rental inspections. Um, we just pretty much give them a 30-day window at the beginning, and we follow back up with a reinspect, and then we assess how much effort they put into it, how much yeah, more they have right. to do. So because of the time, we didn't really need to have this case. No, we don't, we don't, we're not bound by them. We can do what we want. 
So I'm asking, we're what is We're not the even going to inspect it to the 26th. I mean, are we going to run afoul of any kind of law if we decide to fine her starting today? We're here for imposition of a fine. Uh, well, I think we would set a different not, precedent. Right? Your, I believe we have a good faith in the city. Yeah, I believe we have a problem. Right, the problem of the good faith and, and maybe a little bit of a due process mm -hmm. issue. I mean, we have the city Correct. granting a time Correct. period right. uh, as as enforcement, right. That's and that time period uh, so is being penalized point, shorter that time period. I am period. very tired of this case. I'm not just tired, but tired of non-compliance. Let's put it that way, and yep. the lack of response, and. What I would like to do is different than what we're probably going to end up doing so that we don't run afoul of anything in the future we could do. Right. I, I will point that the, um, the effort that's being made or the lack of effort is something that you get to consider for the uh, amount of the fine. So okay. maybe a more severe fine right. would be the ultimate our, right. our result. Okay. My concern I, is, I could see in is you put it on the agenda and we really shouldn't be, because he's got till the 26th. All right. That's not, do it. that's not an accurate depiction of how it occurred. The, the fact that we've been having a non-response and an issue where we've been continuously run back and forth with rescheduling inspections, right. getting a hold of right. tenants, things like that, that's why it ended up on the agenda. The reason that, the fact that it ended up on the agenda that we're pushing it to this point is why we most likely got the inspection on the 25th. Otherwise, we probably would have not received that, okay. that access. But in the so we are following the process and, and, and and, and, and uh, using all our resources, and you are a resource for us, to be able to get access to those places to inspect and do our job. Okay. But is that room, though, a safety issue, since they can't get out of the bedroom? Yes, it's a life safety issue because you have the <laughs> secondary exit. Well, um, but if we started the fine on the 26th, uh, and I gave them the 30 days, they're in compliance, there'd be no fine, obviously. Correct. But I'm going to wait till the next meeting as well. Yes, and okay. then... Although we could, what a convoluted thing this is. Um, Instead of waiting for twelve, we we'll, 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 we'll start to find the day after the sixth. They're in compliance, fine. Uh -huh. If they're not, the fine starts. Uh -huh. Hey, that's a good idea. I like. Okay. okay. I like that too. Just, All right. So the chair will entertain a motion to uh, Im the chair. We'll entertain a motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow respondent until August 26, 2019 to come into compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Right then. Yeah. Or, the, okay. I'll wait till the 12th. Okay, or... A fine, all right, so we'll start this over. The chair will take motion to amend the previous Mr. order of non-compliance allow respondent until August 26th to come into compliance or be fined. How much? Well, do they have to, can we just do that right now? Yeah. What would we like the fine to be? Does the city have a thousand dollars per day? But is that the most you can We can do it up to a thousand dollars per day, yes. I'm going to give it a 26th. I need to hear yeah. yeah. Okay, I like that. Thousand dollars. get the right day. Is it be the twenty sixth? It's the. They came in. The inspection was the twenty fifth. Once you we inspect. Inspect. That is when they are supposed to be in compliance. In compliance, there'll be no fine. Right. I won't start. Correct. Okay. okay. Chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow the respondent until August 26, 2019 to come in to compliance or be fined $1,000 per day until compliance is achieved. Is there such a motion? So, yeah. Up to 15, is it 15 or 20? 15? 15,000. All right, motion, Mrs. Himes, we have a second. Second. Second, Ms. McLean. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. So we're respecting the good faith. I, I didn't give any of that. Case. Right. She's still process. Right. right. Starts. Failure to comply. So fine. Right. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Twelfth of July. But if they come back and they've only done half of it. No. The fine starts <laughs> August 26th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's it. 
I didn't get that because Barbara was talking to oh, me. Okay. <laughs> so you, it's a minute will, order of non-compliance right. until August 26th. Uh -huh, or a fine in the amount of $1,000 per day. Will automatically be imposed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. effective no. August 26, 2019. Mm -hmm. okay. Got it. Until compliance is achieved, right? Got it. And uh, the motion was made <coughs> by. I'm second by. Oh. I mean, Thank you. Point. Sorry. That's All okay. Right. That's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now the next case, <laughs> case eleven, is still uh, CEB zero six one nine dash one one seven. That is another unit there at that four fifteen North Halifax, owned by the same person. Motion to do this. Well, okay, they don't have either of those. Let's see what. So let's see if the issue is the exactly. Issue. Is the issue the same? Uh, no, they just had not right. passed their rental inspection. They had a, a few minor items. Okay. Uh, torn screen window that wouldn't stay up. Okay. Uh, they did have one smoke detector that wasn't operating, but okay. they had the other two. So I mean, it's not anywhere near as egregious right. as the other you can unit. Cut off date and come back in September. Yes, correct. I'm asking for an amended order of compliance with because compliance the next. Because you did the inspection the same. Correct. I did the inspection on July 25th. Okay. Okay. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until the next cutoff date, 9-4-2019, to come into compliance and be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day until compliance is achieved. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion of Mrs. Hines. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number 13. CEB 0719-140, Matilda Riley. Is Ms. Riley here? No. Wasn't here last time? Okay. For some reason I don't have a note, but I'm going to say something else is that. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine the inspectors. Mike Fitzgerald, Mr. Fitzgerald reports that this property remains in non-compliance. Um, he has had numerous site visits dating back from uh, April 17th all the way through uh, uh, yesterday, I guess that would have been. And um, he's asking for a fine of $200 a day to a maximum of $15,000. I would tender uh, Mr. Fitzgerald if you have any factual questions. Good morning. Good morning. Mike Fitzgerald, City of Daytona Beach Code Enforcement. My credentials are on file with the city. Okay. So is, this is not a rental property? It's a duplex. It is a rental property. Did he... So I, I'm going to ask this question now. What? What's the difference between a rental inspection and the maintenance code. Okay. I mean, did this pass a rental inspection? No. Do they have a rental license? No, so, so we come in contact with these cases in two different ways. Sometimes people re report a rental violation. If they report a rental violation, then it goes down the path of our rental inspectors. They inspect and address what needs to be addressed. Okay. If it's not addressed through the rental program and they need to start a code case, a code inspector then steps in and starts a code case. Um, in this case, um, Inspector Fitzgerald has been working this entire block and having a lot of success, mm -hmm. and he was out working code cases. So as he was working his code case, he discovered there was a okay. rental violation as well. So he starts or has one of the rental inspectors start a rental okay. case and they handle that portion of it. Okay. But he still maintains his code case. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Mr. Fitzgerald, not much going on here as far as cooperation or... Have you heard from the owner? Yeah, I've talked to them and uh, she said that she was trying. Has anything been done? Not that I could notice, but okay. maybe some of the stuff is missing. Okay. They cleaned up a little. Okay. There used to be 
around the windows, there was a bunch of foam sticking out that's been cut yeah. back. Yeah, okay. But, but the windows don't operate? Pardon me? The windows don't open? No, no, it was around the outside for, for like, uh, for what? Oh, okay, I got you now. Oh, insulation. You'll see some of them. Well, yeah. do that. well, I see where it was. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $200 a day against the respondent effective today, August 8th, 2019, and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of $15,000. Is there such a motion? Uh, motion, Mrs. Himes. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number 14, CEB 07 19 138, Philip Hankins at 624 Tomoka Road. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports that uh, just like the uh, prior case, he's done several site visits. The property is in non remains in noncompliance. He's asking for a uh, $200 day fine to a maximum of $15,000. Attend to Mr. Fitzgerald for any of your factual questions. So, have you had any contact, Mr. Fitzgerald? No contact. No contact. Any effort been made? None. Okay. Any questions from the board? No. Nope. Chair, will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $200 per day against the respondent, effective today, August 8th, 2019, and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of 15K. Is there such a motion? So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Motion, Ms. McLean. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number 15, CEB 07 19 141. Robert and Susie Owens, whom I believe are deceased. And so last time Carl Carlos Sneed was here, is he back? No. Okay, so we have no choice. <coughs> okay. He represented them as because they were his aunt and uncle or something. I don't know. Yes. What's going on? Yeah, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you film position of a fine. The inspector is Mike Fitzgerald. Mrs. Fitzgerald reports that nothing's been done. Uh, this property remains in noncompliance. He's asking for a $100 per day fine to a maximum of $15,000. I tend to Mr. Fitzgerald. How much per day? $100. $100. What's the difference? I'm sorry. I see. What is the difference between this being in non-compliance for $100 a day right. and the one prior, the two prior, $200 a day? Um, the difference is contact and that he's removed both junk vehicles, cleaned up the oh, yard. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Okay. okay. So some work has some been work. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. That's the only part wow. that's not been done. But that I think he, has, he can't get a permit or something. You know, we don't know. Okay. So... It needs to get a permit. How about is there roof work that's been done? I told he said that's he was going to tear it down. Uh -huh. That's the roof work that we're talking about. Can I see the other pictures, please? Yes. Back to the mic. Back to the mic. Okay, that that there's no issue with that roof up there. No. That, to the mic. Even though the tree is sitting on it, there's no. I say. Okay. Well, it's, you know, yeah. okay. you can't. I can't see damage. Right. <laughs> Okay. That I can see. Yeah. Well, I can also see missing shingles to the no. left of that. They could be clear shingles. Well, or that's attached. a repair with just different colored shingles. Yeah. Or I guess it that. could be a repair. Is it a repair? Yeah. I don't recall. I, I can't tell from here. <laughs> but it yeah. Was, it, I, yeah. I would have seen it. If it was missing, it would be dark. Yeah. I think dilapidated roof covers it. I think it does too. Okay, never mind. I'm being picky. Okay. Um, okay. 
So, Chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent effective today, August 8, 2019, and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of $15,000. So moved. Motion, second. Mr. Harrington, second, Mrs. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. All right. Case number 16, CEV 0719-147. Willie E. and Connie L. Frady. They were not here last time. Well, can you tell us, Mr. Jackson? Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports that um, this property remains in non-compliance for outside storage, trash, and debris. He's asking for a $100 per day fine to a maximum of $10,000, and I will tender Mr. Fitzgerald. Okay. Which, which is the junk vehicle? Um, yeah, most any of those. Oh, um, they're not licensed? <coughs> they're backed in, but I do have pictures of vehicles with no, with, yeah. these are new. And that one does have an old, uh, I guess, a, a license on it. And then there's work going on. He seems to be doing mechanic work, but I have to be able to prove it. But the outside storage, everything in, on the yard, everything over here in the front on the, and behind the fence is just full of stuff. Okay. Questions from the board? Comments? Chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent effective today, August 8, 2019, and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of $10,000. Such a motion? So moved. Motion, Mrs. Himes? Second. Second, Ms. McLean. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed, motion carries. Case number 17. CEB 0919-133. At 439 Auburn is Ms. Mayara here, a representative, okay? Last time, Mr. Mayara showed. Okay. What Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones reports that um, Well, he's asking for us to mentor the next cutoff. And um, I will tend to Mr. Jones. It appears that there's a process where uh, the, the property is in the process of being sold. And so um, I think the solution right now is that uh, for what needs to be done, it would be more effective to wait for the next cutoff and see what happens. But I'll let Mr. Jones speak to that. Okay, Mr. Jones. Yes. All right, here's my understanding. The property, is is it a quick claim deed? I do not know. It has not been uh, recorded. I did visit the property, and it is vacant. There was no one occupying the unit, and I have been in uh, contact with the owner. And what, what and did the owner say? He says say? it's in the process of closing. There were, he had three. One has closed and been recorded and come into compliance. Uh, there's this one, and then the following case is a, a new, new case. They're both, but I have inspected the property. It's unoccupied. Uh, mm. That is why I'm asking for us to amend to the next cutoff. Amend oh, today. Well, yeah, that's uh, because we heard the story last month Look at you. that it was under contract, and I don't hear any specifics about the contract that they're working on it or. Uh, that that's not I enough. don't have He's any not specifics either. Not committed anything to you that shows no. you. So I, I have no way of knowing whether this property is under contract or. Yeah, the only thing I can I mean, attest to is that the property is vacant. Told you. Right, and the property is vacant. Right. Yeah, but we motioned last time if non compliance to fine up to a thousand dollars mm -hmm. per day. Ah. Did you talk to the person you had contact with? Them? Yes, I have had contact with him. He Tell said, me, are you going to ask for next cutoff? No, I haven't okay. explained what we're going to do. He right. understands 
that it can be up for a fine, that it's up okay. to the board to make a decision. Uh, but with the property being vacant, uh, I wasn't as concerned about him not having the rental license as it has been vacant for at least the last two months. Changes because it's vacant to me, I, I think. Yes, so that makes all the consideration. So what's next month going to do, though? He says, again, yeah. I'm going by what he is telling right. me, that he will be closed by then. But we can, okay, we can impose a fine today. We can. We yes. Are you yes, supposed to impose a fine no. today? No. Mm -hmm. And again, I wait until I see if it's recorded before we proceed with that. So. But this has been since April. Yeah, this has been since April. What do you think, Mr. Harrington? I I don't know on this this kind of situation. He's uh, if it's not recorded when the people buy it. Well, but emotion. Okay, go ahead. It goes with the property, not the owner. Right. So we can find right now if we want to. Yeah. And let that, let them worry about it. But. Uh, and I, 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 I just don't have any proof that the property's been sold. I mean, not, I mean, not only that it's just not been recorded, but I don't see any kind of contract, any anything that they have with anyone, other than somebody telling Mr. Jones that, you know. When the last time I read this check. Let's see. Yeah. I've already got it. Oh. Sorry. It's still in her name. We're talking about 203. Yeah. It's still listed in her name. Yeah. It's Madam Chair, I'm wishing that we Go ahead. next cut off with a thousand dollars a day fine. I have a question. Which are we obligated to be concerned with whether somebody's no. selling property? I don't or think not? so. No, 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 yeah, we up. are, yes. Just to make well, sure we don't have the proper parties in front of us. Okay. If it's sold, then yeah, we have a problem. Then we have a problem. But if right. it's in the process right. and it could be closed right. tomorrow it's or the responsibility under the statute for them to advise the new owner. The problem is public good violation. There is a public right. How does the new prospective buyer, how are they notified? The title company should, well, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. That's not our, that's not our. That's requires the person selling the property to inform the person buying the property of the code violation. Right. right. And we have, we have in the past, I think it was in front of the magistrate, had them order that they provide that document that they informed the purchaser Good. of the ongoing case. So you could you could order that, that they provide that by next cutoff if you wanted to, or by a certain date. I like that, yes. Now, for just a point of clarification, he told me he was selling it. He has not told me he has sold uh, it. Right. The uh, other okay. unit he had sold. So I, if okay. I uh, we'll misspoke. You, okay, uh, okay. We're not, but at... Four third at the unit two oh three has not been sold. I'm the chair will entertain a motion. I'm going to make a motion to impose a fine of. Uh, you can't make a motion. I can't. Yes, no, the chair will entertain yes, a motion. Yes. All right. So what what are we thinking of as a fine, or is that is that just me thinking well, of it? What we said last time, a thousand dollars, effective today. Yes. And Good. can we also stipulate that when it does sell, that person is required to share that information? No. Mm. We can't make them. Oh, we can't do that? You put it in motion, but it's state statute. Yeah. State, oh, okay. state statute they anyway. State anyway. And I don't want to get into what they should yeah. or shouldn't do. Yeah, but the next thing we know, the new owner's going to come up and say yeah, there was a fine and I didn't know it. Well, yeah, that's, we you know. That's that's his argument with the uh, title company. Right. That's well, yeah. We could oh, deal okay. with the record the order of non-compliance if we put anybody new on notice. Can I do that? There's no there is no person to put at no, no, this no, point. We, no, we put Nothing in the record. I don't know that we have to complicate it. Oh. All yeah, right. you, you really don't. You correct. The statute covers you. Right. And then also, um, if the title company is doing their job, they'll discover the fine that's then in place if you do a, choose to impose a fine. Okay. Um, the chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $1,000 per day against the respondent effective today, August 8th, 2019. 
up and, to you. Up and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches the maximum of, it, would this be 15,000? 15, 15, yeah. So moved. Motion. So motion, moved. Mr. Harrington, is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. McLean. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Mm. All right, we're going to move on to our new cases. Are all of you here in the audience for new cases? Okay. Well, let's see how quickly we can move through these because I think we'll be finishing. Well, it'll take more time to get everybody's name than it will to go through these cases, I think. Mr. Harrington is leaving. <laughs> So we don't have a quorum. So uh, we could take a five-minute break, and all of you that are here for a case, you could please come up front and see Ms. Barnes, and we'll take your cases first. Okay. All right, I'm going to reconvene the meeting at 1026. And we have case, we're going to do case number 19. I thought we was on 18. Well, we're going to do the people that are here first. Oh, okay. Because we took okay. a break. Yeah. Case number 19, CEB 08 19 159, Dora Dumas. Dumas? I think it was her mother that's here. Dumas. <coughs> Dumas. We'll see how she says it. How do you pronounce your name? Dumas. Dumas. But I'm the mother. State your name. And good morning to each board member and inspectors. Uh, my name is Lily Dumas and the address I'm here for is my daughter oh. at 610 yes, Winchester. Raise yeah. yeah. your right hand. Sorry. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for a determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspectors, Mark Jones, Mr. Jones, reports that um, the property remains in non-compliance. The, they uh, failed the rental inspection back on, on April 26. Um, and so he says he's talked with the owner and they are working on it. And so uh, we're asking that you find them in non-compliance, give them to the next cutoff to come into compliance. Okay. Tender Mr. Jones, if you have any factual questions. May I? Oh. In a second, wait, we'll hear from Mr. Jones. 1920. Long, long list? Long list. 21, 22, okay. 27, 28. Looks like no, a long right. list. I've already got them mixed off. All right. Uh, Ms. Dumas, what would you like to tell us? Uh, I'd like to say, first of all, is that it is a long list, and Inspector Mark sent her the long list, and he didn't give her a date that she's supposed to have these things done on the list. And then she contacted him, and he still had not given her a date, but she's done some of the things that's not on the list, like she painted the house, she's got the screens in, and she's done like half of the things that she highlighted, like the cabinets and things like that. But she lives in Georgia, and she keeps coming down. I'm not trying to make an excuse for her, but trying to get someone that will do the work that you need done <coughs> is very hard. She now has someone that says he can do everything. But he's um, making a list and checking the prices to see exactly how much he's going to charge her. So she needs, you know, at least three months because that's a lot of stuff. Well, I know let, you may let not me, give it that. Let, let me just point something out to you. She was first notified in March. She was notified in April okay. that she failed the inspection. So, it, okay, excuse me. She was notified in March. And she had painted the house or whenever in April when he was supposed to. But when he says she's notified again, she didn't get a notice. And when he sent the thing notified in March, one date is like April the 11th that he said he notified her. But he sent the list on April the 26th. So he, he didn't notify her. He said 11th and she had never got a list at all. Uh, excuse me, we say that again? 
he claims he notified her on the 11th, uh -huh. but she didn't get a note of notification or a list until April the 26th. And then um, her, the people that were in the place, they um, <coughs> let her know as soon as they got it on the 26th. So how can you say I notified you on the 11th and you didn't get the list well, until the 26th? Well, I think they're two different notices, correct? Well, that one was a notice of violation? No. Well, Mr. Jones, you tell us. Yes. Um, back on March 13th, uh, I had generated a notice of violation and it came back to me undeliverable. Okay. On March 28th, I posted the property with a 10-day right. notice, okay, that's which would have been here. April 11th, that they had to have the corrections, what it was to, to apply for and have a rental inspection. Right. Uh, when I inspected the property on the 6th, there was a, uh, a scheduled inspection scheduled by the owner with the, having the tenant being on site and is our policy when we are done with the inspection, whoever uh, allowed us entrance, we give them the copy of the uh, inspection report. Uh, the owner then did call and ask me if I could send her another copy, which was a typewritten copy, uh, which is really just the notes of what was written down, which I then provided to her. Uh, I'm not sure where the uh, April 11th notification is because I didn't uh, notify her at okay. that time. All right. Okay. So this fact remains right now that the property is not in compliance, and that's all we're here to figure out today is whether the property is in compliance or it is not in compliance. Okay. Excuse me. I think the other thing that we're here today for is to no rubber night. She's even trying to bring it up to where it needs to be. And she's done half the things on the list okay, and painted fine. the house. And she's just asking for more time because the contractor said he can't even begin until about three to four weeks. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, we'll, we'll take that into consideration um, when setting a compliance date uh, as well as all these other things that we'll take into consideration when setting a compliance date. So, what, does the board have any comments? <coughs> Chair will entertain a motion to find respondent in noncompliance or the respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date, which is September 4th, or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per me. day. I'm yeah. speaking now. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion. Ms. McLean, is there a second? Before I make a second, let, let her. Speak. You want to hear? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, um, she's in Georgia, and, you know, she has to come back and forth, and she has the man that say he can do everything, and he can't start for, because he's I, working I on three. And when you say September the 4th, that's within the three weeks, and then she'll be really fine. She, can't, she doesn't work. She has an artistic son, and she can't afford a fine, and she'll do the best she can to have it done. But four weeks, he can't even start to three or four weeks. And we're supposed to be a group of people that are working with people. And that's not working with people when you give them three weeks and know the man can't start to four weeks. I used to be on the board, too, and we didn't act like that. Uh, oh, what, uh, Mr. Jones. May I, may I make a recommendation on behalf of the city? Um, and it's, of course, always up to you guys. Um, but uh, what I would say, I, I'm, I'm not really pleased on the approach that's being take here, taken and here. I apologize. But... but I would say that maybe a progress report next meeting with a compliance date for the following meeting might be adequate here. Um, due, due to the fact that there are some circumstances where there's some travel time, and it'll give us a chance to gauge whether anything's been done at that point. Um, and then you'll be able to set something from there. The only and part, part of that is because this is we are here for the for whether they're in compliance or non-compliance and then set a compliance date so it is their first um, opportunity in front of the board. 
Okay. Um, could, I, could I also state, she, her uh, address in Volusia Tax is this property address. If she lives in Georgia and she needs to receive the notices, we could use an updated yes. address for her. And she did, she spoke to um, one of the managers or the superintendent, and he told her to go online and put in her new address. And she just left here last week, and she did go online and put in her new address so that she can get the materials. But it'd be helpful to us if he can just kind of leave that with um, uh, okay. Ms. Barnes today, and so she'll have it on a record for the code board, so that you'll make sure you get all that okay. information. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So just so you understand, I, I at this juncture, it seems like most of us agree up here that to give you the two months of progress report next month. But my concern is that this all started a long time ago and nothing's been done, and that's or very little has been done, not enough has been done. So, um, but I think there's a general agreement up here, so I'm going to entertain a motion to find respondent noncompliance in order of progress report for the next meeting, which is September 12th, and allow respondent until 10-2, 2019, to come into compliance or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion, Mrs. Himes. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign of opposed. Motion may, carries. May I ask you, when you come back, you have that list of yes. things? I do you, have the list with Okay. Me. Will you bring the list with you and tell us exactly what each of those items have been accomplished. Okay, thank it's you. It's two, much. it's five, whatever number, but, you know, some specific as to what you've accomplished. Thank you, sir. Okay. And thank please you. make sure you keep in contact with your inspector so that they can update the file as well. Thank and, you. And we will. Thank you. Can you just okay. write her address down? Here Case me. number 20, no, CEB 0819-160, David and Suzanne Jekovic. State your name and address, please. David Jekovic, 825 Lewis Drive. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. So you don't live there? That is correct. What, what, is, what is the address where you live, sir? I live at 5175 North Highway US 1, Palm Shores, Florida, 32940. Okay. Thank you. Case 20. All right, we're just here today to see whether yeah, you're in compliance sure or not in compliance. Thank you very yes, Madam right. Chair, members of the board, the inspector in this case is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones reports that the property remains in uh, non compliance. He has had contact with the uh, owner. Uh, he's had some issues with the uh, owner and tenant, but I'll let him speak to that. The inspectors, Mr. Jones, not tend to him for any factual okay. questions. Mr. Jones. Yes, I've been in contact with the property owner uh, quite a bit. Uh, he had scheduled a couple inspections. Uh, one was July 25th, and when I got there, the tenant would not allow me into the building. Uh, he thought he had that worked through with the tenant. I went back on July 29th when, at the scheduled uh, time, and no one would come to the door to let me in. So uh, I have not inspected the property at all, uh, and I guess... I also have talked with the owner to see, and he was going to give me an update today as he gave you an update as to what the status is. I'm going to ask a question before we go any further here. If a property owner properly notifies the tenant that there will be an inspection, a city inspection on a certain date, are they, in fact, not allowed to enter that premise by unlocking the door and going in and having the inspection? The city is not allowed to do that. I didn't say the city. I said no. the owner. I, I would go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> Quickly. Even if you posted a notice on the door? Yes. Even okay, if I gave them a 24-hour notice that I'm going to be unless back? Unless it's an emergency, you can't Yeah, call. unless the house was on fire or Correct. flooding, okay. I, would, I would be arrested, yes. Okay. Um, I have a response. Can I respond to this? Uh, let's hear from, uh, do we have anything more to say, Mr. Jones, about this? Um, 
No, that not okay. anything besides uh, I've been in right. contact with okay. the owner. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, I do have a, I received a, I obtained a city license in 2014 on this property. Okay. And I have a current <coughs> uh, license on the property that I've had, um, which is valid until 9-30-2019. So as far as this case here, I am in compliance with a license. I have obtained, and I do have a current license. A rental license? Yep, right here. City rental license. It is current in, in, in a uh, if I could speak, uh, what is also part of having a rental license is every other year you must have a rental inspection. Ins right. uh, the license is not valid. Okay. You've paid for the license, yeah. but right. it's in essence on hold yeah. until you have, you have and pass a rental inspection. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, the license does read valid until 9-30-2019. So I do, I am holding a valid license from the city. My complaint says failure to obtain a rental license. I have obtained a rental license in 2014, and I'm holding a valid license that the city has issued me. And it is not expired until 9-30-2019. And it says it on the, on the piece of paper. Have you been inspected? Have you had an inspection? We have some issues. We do have issues with the tenant. I have, I'm, I have met with the tenant uh, last part of July, after I realized that they were not cooperating with Mr. Jones, I have sent the tenant a seven-day notice to comply. I sent that certified to them, which I do have the certification that Good. they signed it. It says here that they do need to allow him in and take care of the issues that they're in violations. Okay. Today is the day this seven-day notice is up. Okay. After I leave here, I'm going to the clerk of the court, Good. and I'm going to be filing a set their eviction paperwork to remove them from the property. Okay. Once the once they are removed from the property, I'm going to fix the property and sell it. It'll no longer be a rental property. But as of right now, as far as the compliance part, I am in compliance because I am holding a valid rental license, so the case should be dismissed based on that. Now on 930, we could go from there. Yeah, but isn't it true, though, that when you get notified that your rental license is up for renewal, that it says in the verbiage of the letter that you must have an ins a reinspection done? I mean, it's not written on that paper. It's written on the paper that comes with that paper. Am I correct in that? I have, I have a legal the, opinion on this, I think. But the I, issue is the, to everything in good faith. Trying to right, get and I think yeah. it seems to be. I think and I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's... <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I, I believe the, the, the complaint, the violation maybe should say then unable to get inside Occupancy to renew a license, but not that I have a failure to obtain a license. That is not true. I have obtained it since 2014. I'm in possession issue. of it. Okay. Obviously, you're trying good faith to give us an opportunity to get in the it will do that. So we need to give you some time to get you to that eviction. But I believe this case should be dropped due to the fact that no, I have not, not I am I am holding a valid license. Done. But I still have I have but not a failure like a, uh, as of the complaint. Getting a billing permit. It's not just billing permit, billing permit, but it's inspections. This one. But the, the license said this complaint that I've been accused of is failure to obtain a rental license. I have I'm holding in my hand valid to uh, we hear nine thirty rental hear license. Okay. So this case should be dry. if you want to bring another case against me on nine thirty that I did not comply with Mr. Jones or my property is still occupied, please do that. I would be more than happy to comply at that time. But this case should be dropped based on the merits of the case. I hear what you say. Uh, I'd like to add a few things. Yeah, um, compliance should be something you're doing without being cited for a violation. So you should be coming into compliance because it's what you're supposed to do, um, whether we cite you for it or not. But um, the generic wording that's on there that's used in the violation is a generic wording that's used from the computer system. It doesn't, uh, it's not intended to be a full description of everything you're supposed to comply with. Um, and you are and have had numerous conversations with uh, Inspector Jones and you yourself have set up inspection dates. So you know and you're fully informed that part of that process is inspections and you're required to go through those. The, the first inspection date that was set up, Mr. Jones did not show up to that inspection date, which kind of triggered the things with the tenant causing it or issues. But the, the 
the complaint that my violation should read maybe failure to allow someone in to get a continuing inspection. Okay. Okay. But I have a valid license. Okay. I'm, I'm if legal. you if if you have a customer service issue or a complaint, myself or uh, Manager Sykes would be glad to address it with you after the meeting. I do not have um, a customer service relay. I think he's acting professional. But but that's not what we're here for today. Yeah, no, I have no so. customer service. I think he's been acting professional in a professional manner. I have no. But he did miss one appointment to. The first time, which has triggered a lot of these issues with the tenant not allowing us to get into the property. But I am current, and I'm valid. I, I, Is it on I don't see how what has anything to do with the other. The, just, so we're, just so we're all but on the same page. we are page. well within our rights to find him in noncompliance. That the legal opinion of the city? I'd have to um, ask you to pass it and pull up the uh, ordinance to be I, able to... I think the code to, to do that. Really I don't well. have the, that portion of the code with me. Going around circles here now. Mm -hmm. he, he, he needs to give oh. back. Yeah. He needs to have enough time to get his eviction resolved. That's what he needs to resolve. I will not be retaining a, a rental license. Once the eviction is resolved, it's probably taking anywhere from 30 to 90 days. Once that eviction is resolved, I will keep the property empty, repair the property, and sell it. It will not, at that point, will not need a license because I will not be re renting the property. We did look up his license in the computer system to confirm his can, his license is on hold. It's not active and it's not valid. Um, it's on hold because he hasn't completed the inspection. So. Oh, okay. I'd like to continue the case is what I'd like to do. Well, yeah, I do, except that he has a... I, I don't want to get city... I don't want to say anything or do anything that would... Uh, interfere in this case because it was something legally something legal was involved that's way above my pay grade again we're amenable to uh, continuing the case I think right yeah that's, that's, that's correct. Let's make a motion to continue all right so chair will entertain a motion to continue case number CEB 0819-160 such a motion. So moved. Motion, Mrs. Himes. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. McLean. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like, sign, opposed. So this case is continued until next month. 9-12. Which is 9-12-2019. Thank you. Case my, number 21, CEB 0919-166. Respondent was here. He's still here. This is Mr. Weatherford. Oh, yeah, there he is. Your name, what it used to be. <laughs> State your name and address, please. Thomas C. Weatherford, 935 South Atlantic Avenue, number 148. Um, Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Jackson. Yes, madam. Uh, chair members to the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or noncompliance. The inspector is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones reports that the property remains in noncompliance and he's asking for next off for the property to be brought into compliance. Uh, it's uh, right now, he needs some permit, and the permit is under review, at least as of my last communication with Mr. Jones regarding this. I would tender Mr. Jones if there's anything additional. Okay. Mr. Jones. Yes, uh, the owner uh, submitted an application for his rental license back in uh, May 17th, and on May 22nd, it was approved. Uh, I talked to the owner on May 28th to schedule a uh, inspection and he told me the property was being sold. Uh, as of uh, checking with the clerk of the courts, it has not sold as of today, well, excuse me, as of last week. And I have had no further contact okay. with the owner until today. Okay, thank you. What would you like to tell us, Mr. Weatherford? I've been in and out of the hospital. I have discharged papers from three different no. hospital visits. The okay. property is going to be <laughs> sold. I entered into a, an agreement with a gentleman to buy the property. 
but then I was in the hospital and he was on a cruise and uh, we just never got together. Okay, so what's going on now? Pardon me? What is happening now? Well, you're back. I'm back. Gratefully. Okay. And I have to, I, I, I'd be happy to make these, these r repairs. Okay. Uh, I just need a little bit of time to fix one of the units up. Okay. Before I sell the property to him. The downstairs unit is rented out. It's perfect and beautiful. The okay. apartment above the garage, the same. And the unit on the top floor was one that I forced to live in after Hurricane Matthew right. destroyed my condominium. And so I was living up there. My health was uh, deteriorating. Okay. And I just need a little bit of time to get up there and okay. do a few things. Okay. And then uh, I'll be in Relax. compliance. Good. Okay. Uh, you need to do a few things. Would you think you'd have them done by October 2nd? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Does anybody have anything they'd like to ask or on the board? Okay. Chair will entertain a motion to find respondent noncompliance and a respondent come into compliance by October 2nd, 2019 or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Is there such a motion? So moved. Okay, motion, Mrs. Himes. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. McLean. All in favor say aye. 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 Like, sign, opposed. Motion carries. October <coughs> uh, 2nd. October 2nd. Yep. Okay, Thanks stay very in much. touch, please, with Mr. Jones. Let him know what you're doing so he can do what he needs to do, too. Sure. And you'll get everything all squared away. Okay. Okay. Uh, case number 22. CEB 0819-17 PO Peter Frank. Mr. Frank is here. Peter Peter Frank, 3925 Kiowa Lane, Ormond Beach, 32174. And are you also going to testify? Yes. Yeah. Mike Bretzel. New dress or? Yeah. Uh, 242 Royal Dune Circle, Ormon Beach, Florida, 32176. Okay. Raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. this is before you for a determination of compliance and noncompliance. The inspector is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones reports that the property uh, remains in noncompliance and that there's the need for a rental license. The uh, rental, uh, the property management company submitted a rental application on 8-2, August 2nd, and that is currently under review. Uh, so uh, we're asking for next cutoff for the property to be brought into compliance. Okay. Mr. Frank, what would you like to tell us? Well, we bought the property five months ago, yes. and uh, it needed a lot, a lot of work. We had mm -hmm. to get different building permits. It took some time. It's everything is completed. One of the renters was a Vietnam War vet that was in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and it took me over three months to find him a new place to live. I didn't want to just throw him out. So everything is done. Everything is completed. We're just waiting for the inspection. Okay, good. That's great. So, sounds good to me. Sounds okay. like you're working on it. It's Thank all, you. It's all done. Okay. Cheryl, we'll make sure that you stay in touch then with Mr. Jones. Correct. Okay. General entertain motion to find respondent in noncompliance or respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date, September 4th, 2019, or be returned to board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? So moved. Motion, Mrs. Himes. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mr. Harrington, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like aye. sign opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Case number 27. CEB 0. 819-161 Carolina Wagner. This is 542 North Ridgewood. I'm a little nervous. Case is State your name and address, <laughs> please. <laughs> Carolina Wagner. 542 North Ridgewood Avenue in Daytona Beach, Florida. Do you use the microphone? Oh. 542 North Richard Avenue, Daytona Beach, Florida, okay. 32114. Is that where you live? Yes, okay. 544 upstairs. Okay. Raise your right hand. 
Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspector is Danny Garcia. Mr. Garcia reports that this property remains in non-compliance. <laughs> uh, he's asking for next cutoff for the property to be brought into compliance. I attend to Mr. Garcia. Okay. Uh, good, morning, uh, good morning, Inspector Garcia, Garcia. Uh, with Daytona, credentials on file. Um, the property still remains in non-compliance. Um, I spoke to, I have contact with the owner, but um, no permits have been pulled yet. Uh, she states that she does have a contractor, but um, there still none have been applied. Um, the issues are uh, the roof that you see in the picture there, that has been just uh, been eliminated. Uh, the stairs still is, oh. is remaining to be um, unsecured for the uh, safety issues. Um, there, on the right-hand side, where you see the number 544, that that whole um, area there has been added with uh, without permits. So that's what we're looking at. And um, th there's other pictures that'll show um, exterior surfaces and uh, stuff like this, where the side has <coughs> has been added and nails and what put in and uh, uncompleted work that started that has been completed okay. without permits. Additionally, um, the city would like the board to address uh, what we consider a life safety issue, which is that spiral staircase. If uh, if you go back to that picture for us, that staircase has actually was originally positioned to the to the right. It was cut free from its uh, base and then reattached to the top there. It's just propped up on a couple of bricks. And it's unsafe and should not be used and should be immediately removed from the from the property. In our opinion, um, and we'd like that life safety issue addressed. That's the one in a shorter time frame than next cutoff, if possible. Yeah, that's the one that I mentioned for the securing of facility okay. issues. <coughs> All right. Now, it says you, failure to obtain a business tax receipt. What's the business? Uh, that one, actually, she'd pay for. Um, Inspector Jones uh, did a rental inspection on it, okay. and it, it failed. So the, the building is a rental property? Uh, yeah, parts okay. of the building. Okay. But you live there as well? Yes, 544. Okay. <coughs> Can you take care of those stairs in a quick amount of time? Well, okay, let me tell you what happened with these stairs. Like he said, yes, it was on the other side. Somebody was trying to steal those. I was not in my house. I was in my country. And when I came, the stairs were sideways. I got somebody else, and they, he helped me out, and then we put it on the side, hold it to the, to the place there. But it's it's already been secure. We put cement and everything at the bottom. And the, yes, it is in the process. I got an engineer that he's doing all the work for me all the way in the front. And those and this cover that you see over there, we got a shooting right there in North Street, but a month, a month and a half before that, and I was nervous. And I covered up my perch because it was people running all over. And I bought it up. Okay, and the, if you guys want me to take it out, I can take it out and put the regular reeling really like I was. But yeah, I, 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 was, I, think I, was that, I think that's the issue is that. Yeah, they oh, bought it up. Yeah, the, they bought it's up to you. No, um, the, the issue is the stairs. That's one of the issues. That, I mean, that's no, one, that's, the, life third, that's yeah. the life safety issue is the stairs need to come down. Yeah. Okay, and right yeah. now. And it's full, one the other. No, I don't think he said correctly installed. Well, she can't well, correct well, it, them. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be it can be corrected and, it and be in a safe it. manner. Our our yeah. only other remaining question would be: Is that door the only ingress and egress of that that area, and is it occupied? Yeah, because I live there. No, and no, it's my porch. Okay, but what I'm saying is, if you remove those stairs, for example, to eliminate the life safety issue, that door would also have to be eliminated or, or, or secured in a way that couldn't be, somebody couldn't walk out of it, is what we're talking about. Yeah, well, but what happened is, like I said, when he was there, okay, we got a problem there before, yes, the stair was 
on evening. But now we secure there. He's been there. So, you Mr. Told Garcia, you? are the stairs secured? Uh, no. Well, no. They, I spoke to her, uh, and I spoke to her on this day where you see the, uh, the gentleman there who's one of the persons she hired and explained to her, um, not once but twice, that that stairway needed to be sectioned off um, where no one can gain access to it uh, for the safety issues. And that was... Um, uh, uh, so so not, it's, not, it's the opinion of the city that this is a life safety issue, which we take very seriously. Okay. I if, know. I'm talking. Okay. It, Sorry. And um, that this needs to be fixed immediately mm -hmm. to their satisfaction, right. not to your satisfaction or wh whatever their standards are. And as for the rest of the issues, I mean, that you're not in compliance with, that's, we'll give you till next month to come into compliance with those. I have a question. Go ahead, Mr. Okay. Garcia. You're saying that when you were there, the stairs were not stable. They were not. I'm, I'm not saying they're not stable. I'm saying that it was a, it's, it's a life safety, it's a safety issue, and it should be roped off, sectioned off, uh, covered with some type of orange plastic, whatever, something so that people can know they cannot play on it, they cannot go on it, okay. and, you know, so that this way it's until they figure out what they want to do, if they're so, going to remove so it, it or not. So it goes back to what Captain Lee said, it needs to be taken down or it can't. Exactly. Or it, and you need to stay in touch with Mr. Garcia. Mm -hmm. When you do these things, you need to find out from him exactly what it is you need to do to correct this situation. Mm -hmm. yep. The question I have is, if they were to take the stairs down, would that be a cause another problem, life safety problem for that apartment up there? No, the only thing is, is like Captain Lee said, that uh, the door up there is needed to be. Is there other access to that apartment? No. Uh, yeah, there's an access okay. to the back. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, one question. I also, I'm sorry, just to. In response to the previous statements, um, I respectfully disagree that it was boarded up after the shooting. And if you have documentation or evidence of that, I would ask you to bring that back to the next hearing. And it, it doesn't matter. We don't allow. Well, I mean, that's not an right. issue to me. Okay. All right. The chair will entertain a motion to find respondent noncompliance and order the respondent to come into compliance by the next cutoff date, September 4th and further orders that the life safety stair issue be taken care of in the next 10 days? That's fine. That's it, 10 days. And, and in the meantime, it needs to be roped yeah, off or covered off. Or, or so off. immediately Correct. made safe. Okay, honey, can I have a, can I give you can I say something? We need some little bit of time because I have an engineer because I can't. Right, we'll see what happens at the next meeting, but in the meantime. No, we, we need more time, honey. They, I don't think no, three she, weeks she is enough. Yeah. Actually, the tenant's her daughter. Oh. We're making decisions. Sorry. All right. Can, can I have Can we also um, have permits applied for? And at least issued by next cutoff, definitely also. We indicate that. Because we, um, we've been waiting. All right. Well, it would be part of compliance. So what we're saying is the life safety issue must be taken care of mm -hmm. immediately. Secured immediately. Secured immediately. What so that no one can go up or down those stairs, correct? Immediately right. means today. Tomorrow? Yeah. What, what would you like? Does secure Tomorrow. mean taking it down or putting a fenced lock around it? What does it mean? Securing as in securing the area as, as of today, starting today. And then if she's going to, they're going to remove it. They need to get it with permits and get it removed as, you know, as soon as possible. Um, and if not, then... All right, so we're here today to figure out compliance or non-compliance. So we are determining that the property is in non-compliance at this point. That was part of the motion. The second part of the motion was that the life safety issue of the stairs would be taken care of, they would be secured. 
I'm, I'm sorry. Let me let me just clarify. Let, let's talk about reality for just a second. The reality is, in order to fix those stairs, you would have to go through the permitting process, the engineering process, and all that. You're not going to be able to do that in a short amount of time frame, and there is mm -hmm. a life safety issue. So you need to basically take those stairs down and okay. secure that door, and you need to do that immediately. Okay. And I think that's what the city is is requesting. Okay. Um, so well, I would ask that you give her a a couple of days to do that. Okay. I think five days is adequate. Okay. Um, you guys make whatever recommendation okay. you want. All right. I'm going to... Find no compliance. We're going to... Chair will entertain motion to find respondent non-compliance in order to respond and come into compliance by the next cutoff date or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 a day and further requires that the respondent take care of the life safety issues of the steps within the next five days, which that, what's that date? I don't have a calendar here. Do we know what that date is? The 13th. By August 13th, 2019. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion, Ms. Himes, is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Harrington, all in favor say aye. Aye. Life sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. So take care of those stairs in five days. Secure those stairs. We'll take them down, do whatever. Take them down. Okay. Close the door. And then it, it <laughs> lock the doors. <laughs> lock the doors and then come back, back here yeah. next yeah, come back here next month. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay, so case number twenty eight, C E B zero eight one nine dash one six four. Uh, the Fulbrights, Tadora and Evan. State your name and address, please. My name is uh, Tadora Gordon Fulbright, and my address is 1104 Lakewood Park Drive, Daytona Beach, Florida. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I affirm. Okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, we're here for determination of compliance and non-compliance. The inspector is John Stinson. Mrs. Stinson reports that the property remains in non-compliance for off-street parking in the front yard, and he's asking that it be brought in compliance for the next cutoff. Okay. Would you like to tell us anything? It was pretty simple uh, to me. Yes, it's uh, probably self-explanatory, but I've been parking like this for ever since I owned the house. And uh, I didn't know I was out of compliance by okay. doing that. Okay. And um, I have a truck that's parked on the other side that I use for the food bank uh, at my church. And they had to rent a truck this week in order for them to go get the food. But I'm in the process of trying to find someone to put an engine in it. I've tried since he contacted me uh, and told me that I was in violation for having it parked over there. And I tried to get it in, and I went back to check last week before I went out of town, and they told me that he couldn't get it in yet. That and then the other vendors that he used, that they was busy with okay. uh, mechanical work. Okay, so, so I'm I'm working on it. Okay, you're working on it. So we'll give you till next month to get it done. Okay. Okay. Well, I might not be longer than that because well, it, it we'll see at that point. Okay. What happens? All right. Okay. The chair will entertain a motion to respond, respond at non compliance, and other respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date, September 4th, 2019, or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion, Mrs. Hines. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. McLean. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like, sign, opposed. Motion carries. All right. Okay. So by Two. next month, just get it fixed. And when you do, Please uh, talk to Mr. Uh, Stenson right away. So okay. He knows. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam right. Chairman, yes. we do have one oh, more. Oh, I'm sorry. One, one more respondent. He was out when we oh. took the names. And Mr. Please Nelson. What's the case? Case 25. We just, what case was that? Okay. What case 25. CEB 0819 State your name and address, please. Uh, Larry Nelson, 123 East Mason Avenue, Daytona Beach. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but I the truth? I always tell the truth. Okay. 
Here. Yes, Mr. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or non compliance. Uh, what else I see? Oh, the inspector is. Um, Barbara Collins. Barbara Collins. Collins. <laughs> uh, Collins. It's not Collins? What is it? <laughs> That's all right. Good morning, Barbara. <laughs> the inspector is Barbara. Okay. And um, she is, um, the property is in non compliance. She reports to the property is in non compliance since she's asking for next call for the property to be brought okay. into compliance. Just That's some nice. peeling paint we're looking at here? I know the numbers are all. No. Okay, there we go. Pardon? He just needs to paint. He's painted the front. He needs to paint okay. the side of the building. Okay. So, <coughs> so, is that okay with you? By the next cutoff date, you'll have the other side of the building? That's it? It is not a problem. I thought this was taken care of. Sorry. What What do you mean you thought it was taken well, care of? Well, when she first came out, uh, she was complaining about how shoddy the building looked. Uh-huh. And so I painted the front of the building. Uh-huh. And we got rid of some drums and stuff. Okay. The, Good. The problem with the drums is that they won't pick them up unless we get at least three or four of them. But uh, she did come back and... What are in the, the drums? Pardon me? What's in the He's drums? An elevator? Just used oil. Oh. Uh, just. And okay. we changed the oil on the elevator. But she did mention the, the side of the building, and I, okay. I told her I thought it looked fine, and she says, okay, and I thought that was the end of it. Sorry. Okay. Um, but it does. Evidently, it doesn't look fine. Um, hard, hard to see in the pictures, but if you yeah, can get it, that side. It looks bad from here, but when I was in the sunshine, it looked pretty good. Okay, yeah, I, you know, but you got another month to do it, so. No Is that problem. okay? All right, good. Chair, I want to motion to find respondent not compliance or respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 a day. Is there such a motion? Oh, and that's motion, Ms. Himes, there a second? Is it September 4th? Second. Okay, second. Ms. McLean, all in favor say aye. September 4th. Aye. Like, like sign opposed? Motion carries. All right, so, and make sure you stay in touch with Ms. Collins and let her know when it's done so you don't have to come back here again. Okay? Get hard. Just, yeah. you know, get it painted. Okay, thank you. Okay, now uh, we're going to stay on this page since we're here because oh. nobody else is here. Case number 26, CEB 0819-167, Mercados at 101 Baywood. No permit. Um, <clears throat> Noncompliance, next cutoff. Okay. They did apply for a permit. They were here. <clears throat> they had to leave. Um, oh, so they should okay. be in compliance. Okay. By next cutoff. Okay. That's simple. <coughs> Chair will entertain a motion to find respondent non-compliance or respondent committed compliance by the next cutoff date, 9-4-2019, or be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 a day. Such a motion? So moved. Motion, Mrs. Himes. Second? Second. Second. <laughs> second. <laughs> I'm to give him a chance to say <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Let's see. About case 18. All right, let's go back to, what is it, 18, I think, where we need to be. Is that gentleman out there waiting? No, no. just no. a spectator. Okay. okay. That's so we're, we're going back to page what? That's when we took the break. Okay, page no, 6. No, we didn't take 18. No. We're going back to page 6. It, but they didn't do it. Page 6. There's one case on there, case number 18, CEB 08-19-158. kind of sit there. Uh... Nobody showed up? Nope. Uh, failure to obtain rental license? Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this the inspector is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones reports that uh, this situation is one where it's, uh, uh, it's, just, it's a noncompliance, it's vacant, noncompliance, next cut off. Okay. All right. We're not going to have to go through. This isn't the same thing like this property sold. We're going to have to do that next month. Great. Okay. <laughs> Cheryl, I obtain a motion to find respondent noncompliance and respondent to come into compliance by the next cutoff date or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? So moved. Second. Motion, Ms. McClain. Second. Uh, Ms. Himes, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. 
Uh, let's see where we are now. Oh. 23. 23. 23. Case number 23, CEB 0819-162, Kevin Block on Golf Avenue. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination compliance or non-compliance. The property remains in non-compliance. <laughs> Inspector uh, Steve Alderman, Mr. Alderman reports that um, there's a permit under review, something about uh, garage being moved, uh, and I would uh, tend to Mr. Altman to speak to the facts of this a little better. Okay. Sir? Good morning, Madam Good Chair, morning. members of the board. Again. Uh, Steve Alderman, Neighborhood Services Inspector, City of Daytona Beach, and her credentials are on file. I remembered that. <laughs> okay. Uh, What's the issue here? Um, it was a CRM complaint on uh, June 5th that I went to that uh, had no permit for an accessory structure moved and a new slab poured. I visited the site 6519 June and uh, posted a stop work order for no, no permit. Okay. And, Anything uh, going on? Pardon? Anything happening? Uh, yes. I'm going through my list. Okay. Uh, notice of violation was generated. Stop recorder on 6-5. Compliance okay. date set for 6-20. And the site visit 7-1. No permit was applied for at that time. And I've had uh, CEB-2 was sent, 7-1. And since then, 7-2, uh, the permit was applied for on 7-31. He's found out that he's going to have to remove 23 square feet of that structure to be within the easement of the, of the property line or remove it, rebuild it completely, one of the two. So he's going through the process with permits and licensing to decide whether, what he wants to do that, at that level. Is this being done by a contractor or the owner? He is a contractor. Oh, he is a contractor. Yes. Okay. Well, and as you can see by the wow. front of the house, the guy does very meticulous work, but he did not get a permit for this, so he's He didn't get a the permit, price. and it's... it's um, uh, there's setbacks involved. Correct. And all that. Correct. So he may have to go to a board to ask if he can get relief Correct. from that. Okay. But at the point, at this point, he does have a permit applied for. It's under review and he's okay. modified. All right. Well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion will the chair will entertain motion to find respondent non-compliance and the respondent committed compliance by the next cutoff date, September fourth, twenty nineteen, or be returned to the board for consideration or fine up to a thousand dollars per day. Such a motion. So moved. Motion, Mrs. Heim, second. Second. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor, say aye. 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 Like sign, opposed. Motion carries. Case number. Madam four. Chairman. That's that. Ma'am. The t case 24 is actually in compliance. Oh, good. Well, um, isn't that nice? The, uh, as of 8 7 2019, the um, inspector informed good. me. Your record, please. Okay. Sorry. Case number 24, CEB 08 19 168, has come into compliance on 8 7 2019. All right, now let's see what else we have to do here. One, two, three. The last Just the last case. Last one. Okay. Case number 29, CEB 0819-171, Joseph Leon Turner at Berkshire Road Parking. And Okay. Yeah. Madam Chair, the inspector in this case is John Stinson. Mrs. Stinson reports that the property remains in our compliance for parking in yard and junk vehicles. Uh, he's asking for next call for the property to be brought into compliance. Then to Mr. Stinson. Okay. Anything you'd like to say? Just still there and still the it's same and no. The same condition. No motion. Mm, any contact? No contact. Chair will entertain a motion to find respondent in non-compliance and the respondent come into compliance by the next cutoff date, September 4th, 2019, or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion, Mr. Harrington. Aye. Is there a second? Second. Second. Ms. Himes, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Well, now, do we have any miscellaneous business? No. Okay, so who are the two people that have applied <laughs> for the board or that uh, are going to be appointed? Do we have are we any adjourned? idea? Are we, are we adjourned? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, adjourned.